It's a year since I bought this from Asda and I still use it every day. This is for people who don't know about pressure cookers, but the manual bit, what you do is you put your stuff in, you go like that, and then the pressure cooker bit is you seal it up like that. I think the two questions novices will have is, can it explode? Hey, I don't know, but I don't think so. I don't think there's a little chance. And the other question would be, will it melt my plastic containers? And I've been using this one, and uh, this is it clean, but no, it's it's been alright. I suppose there must be a chance, but uh, I've been alright. I don't think I may use things like gla glass crockery or even ceramic, I'm not sure, but for the plastic ones I've been alright. Even the top, which is really flimsy. There always needs to be liquid in it. Um, I think they say a, a minimum, I can about 320 millilitres of water. I've not really worked out what they mean, but because do you need to put in your meal and 320 millilitres of liquid water? I'm not sure. And they also say only fill it up to two thirds if you're um, cooking a meal for four or something, so that there's always room for expansion. And if it's stuff like rice and that, they, they recommend it halfway up. That's what I read anyway, that's what I think. This inner bowl comes out so you can clean it easily in that. And uh, I was at first using this basket, so I guess I was steaming my food. But then all the fat and that was dripping out of it, so I've changed just to a pot. This one, basically making a ready meal. And so I used to use this, I got this from Home Bargains, it's quite nice. But uh, I gave up steaming, and I just float that in the water really. Yeah. I'm going to put the water in. I think the main dangerous thing you could do is when it's pressure cooking, to th that's it sealed. But the main dangerous thing would be to open it because it would just come flying off. So never ever open it when it's pressure cooking, when it's pressured. Like that. Always keep it on like that. The way to unpressure it is the, through this. Or just wait 10, 20 minutes and it'll go down naturally. But you can do that, but use a fork or something so that you don't, because it'll spray over your hand or hot steam. As for exploding, I don't, I think it's got sensors in it that can tell. I mean, how would it explode? Maybe if you put no water in it. But I think it's got a sensor in it that can tell that you've not got water. I mean, the, the mistake I've made is I left the pressure thing off. And then it was just acting like a slow kicker, but the pressure was getting through here and here. So there was no danger from that really, but it just meant that it was slow cooking rather than pressure cooking. When I say slow cooker, this thing goes at one kilowatt, so it's the same as a, a hob really, a cooking hob. I mean when you pick saute, it's one kilowatt it's going with, so what you do is you, you keep the lid off and you put your stuff in there. And really it's just acting as a cooker when you do that. But at one kilowatt, you're not getting any control over the, the speed, so it's, it's really high cooking. If you're not using it as a pressure cooker, if you're using it as a slow cooker, you can just put the lid on and keep this open. That's it, and open. That's it closed, but you keep it open. And so the pressure just gets out, and it's just a slow cooker. I think the only way to find out if things will melt like this uh, is to try them out, you know, that's what I've done with this, or checking forums and stuff, you know, but uh, this, it's not even, just very slightly, but as long as there's water in it, underneath in that, and that's even putting the lid on, I mean, this lid's really flimsy, so, yeah, because everything you cook in a pressure cooker is wet, although it says you can cook cakes and stuff, you know, but I'm not expertise enough. I wonder about ready meals, you know the ready meals that come in the plastic packaging? I wonder if you could just put them in there with water. I mean you would need to experiment yourself, you know. That plastic's a bit, it must be a bit not much thinner than this, but I've not tried it. Oh yeah, I meant to say, it's a, it's a great way to cook because the texture's really, usually really nice in meats and stuff. And also, it cooks really fast, you know, because yeah, I, I put in 
that sort of homemade soup and lentils stuff last year and I had it broken down in about 40, minute, 40 minutes or something, you know, whereas usually you would need to cook that for hours on a cooking hob. It was done in like 40 minutes. I'm talking about pulses and stuff. I'll cook a meal here. I'm just putting in, I'm not sure if, I've been putting in less and less water and I wonder if the less you put in, the, the harder the texture is. I'm not sure. So I've started upping my water again. So, but I, even that, I've not got much, but it's certainly probably about 320 millilitres. So if you just want to cook in this, you know, you can just take it out anyway. Put it in the dishwasher or whatever. So it's great like that. With me using this, I don't wash it at all really. So that's why I started using that as well. And to seal it away from the water. I mean, some of this I would definitely make sure it's got holes in it, you know, so it can vent. Or even, I might even just try it without that. Yeah, it's got a sort of rubber seal here you're meant to clean if you occasionally. I've not cleaned it yet, a year later. There's the pressure thing. There's the other valve. It just that pops up once the pressure's got to its level. So it'd be sealed like that and that would pop up. It's great. The socket comes out here at the side. If you should ever, you know, for packing and whatever, storage, moving. Apparently water might be able to gather here and this is what they've put a collector there. I've never emptied it though in a year. Maybe it's just falling out, I don't know, but can't get it back in. Yeah, I got it, it just sort of clicks. Oh, oh good. I'll do it later. That's the sensor thing. Open close. So if you lift this out, it's just a heater really. So, heats up the pot. I may be talking rubbish because I think everyone just ends up using manual. 30 minutes is the default, but you've got all these ones and I really don't know if people use them, you know, because I've watched Instant Pot videos. I don't know, because you, you can change the texture with these sort of things, mid or low or high. But I don't know what difference that makes. Does that mean it's, the time is going to be longer or something? But really, I just use manual. Frozen veg. You know the routine. Slice it in. Frozen. That was like that. They're all big bits. Bigger than I expected. When I first started using this, I was uh, cooking them, say around about 12 minutes, 15 minutes. I think you could do them, but really, the thicker they are and the more of an ice block they are, really I go for 20 minutes now, maybe even 22. I just want to overdo it rather than underdo it, because I have taken stuff out sometimes, like, if meat can be blocks of ice, you know, if like that, I, th I, find, I find it gets difficult for it to get into. I don't know if it's because it's I've got it in this pot. It's maybe a bit harder for it. But, yeah, so I always err on the long side, longer side now. So about 20 minutes. I mean, if you were putting a frozen chicken in or something, I don't know how many. I think the maximum it can go up to is 60 minutes, the pressure cooker. And the maximum recipe I've seen is 50 minutes in the booklet. So, um, I don't know how long you would go for something like a chicken because when it's a thick block you know like that I think it, it finds it really hard to get in the middle whereas with my chicken things like that it's easier I'm going to make a sauce fans will know that uh, I used to microwave all this stuff but with hindsight it was probably all not very good I don't know but I've moved to sachets now you know because they're easier to carry home from the shops I think they're just as good as well, maybe even better. I had a bit of organic tomato puree, just to sort of thicken it up. Random. Is that interesting? Sometimes I use pesto, that's really good. 
quite like this as well. I'm just going to pull that over. I'm not even going to mix it because it's ice cold anyway. Right. It's a dead chicken. Vents. In the old days I would have used that, not with the not with the sauce, but nah I went I moved. This is better. Suppose this is steaming really. So the main dangerous thing you could do is when you're pressure cooking, that's it, shut. If you tried to open it while it's pressure cooking or while it was still pressured. So never do that. Always make sure you vent it to get anything out. Not like that because you'll burn yourself with a spoon or something or, or wait until that drops, that takes about 20 minutes. You go that. Twist. Locked. Take two. So you go like that. Twist. Lock. Sealed. Water. Pulling right. Seal. Never open while pressured or pressured. Okay, I'll put the meal in there. I mean, my, this doesn't even float all the time that I put water in. So uh, even with it touching the bottom, it still doesn't melt. I think I've just been lucky though, anyway. I'm just hoping water alone is enough for it not to melt. Right, we're getting to the business end. Put it on this side. There it is. That's in position. I already had that locked. That's it unlocked. That's it locked. I reckon it takes about eight, eight minutes to pressure up and when it does, you'll hear that bubble and then that'll finally seal and that's it. So I'm going to do 20 minutes here. So I'm going down. Going down. Actually, I'm going to go 22 because the chicken bits were a bit big. And for people that don't realise, you've also got to add on the time it takes for it to pressure up. So that can be about 8 minutes, so you could be talking about 30 minutes here. I always get start and stop mixed up, so it's the top button you're pressing for start. And another thing is, once it's finished, it goes into OH it says here, it's a sort of keep warm phase. And uh, I suppose you could accidentally leave the keep warm on. You've got to press stop to get rid of it. So Definitely press stop at the end, but that only heat thing, I think it's maybe for when you're not around or something and it's keeping it warm once all the pressure's left at the end. But uh, it's, I don't know if it's a, a danger or not, I don't think so. Yeah, it's number 13 here, we're talking about OH. I wonder what OH means. And it's it goes into a keep warm mode. To state the keep warm time and hours. So you could make that hours. Maybe it's not keeping mine's warm then because mine just says OH. But uh, I just switch off in the end. I'm always around anyway. I don't leave it unattended. So it's locked and sealed. Time to go. I reckon about 30 minutes. So I've got to wait for it to build up first. Maybe it's mentioning the locked, unlocked thing by twisting. So it's like four minutes and it's start starting to bobble a wee bit and uh, I can hear it, it's sort of like a kettle, although a very quiet one. That's another great thing, it's, it's really quiet and uh, there's no smells really while you're cooking until you vent it off because uh, it's all in there. So it's 20 to 22 minutes. I'm wondering if I've done something wrong because uh, that thing, silver thing's not sealed yet. Hmm. I thought it stayed in the, the non number phase until it's sealed, but obviously not. So a big danger, never twist it in this sort of phase when it's pressuring. You can twist that if you want, although it doesn't make sense to because that's. That's sealed, that's the vent. And there's the manual one that we're waiting on. Not the manual, the, the main. I feel I've done something wrong here. 
Oh no. Oh, I need to go to the last 19 minutes. It's time to pop up. I would say that's about 11 minutes it's went so far. So let me see you guys. Why? Is that it? No. There we go. I missed it. Alright. The big moment. 18 minutes. So I'd say that's about 12 minutes it's been going. So I reckon it's going to take about half an hour. 30 minutes. I reckon it's the best way to cook wet stuff. And I've got an air fryer as well for our dry stuff. So a brilliant combo. Once it reaches this stage, I've then got to wait till it calms down a that. So I always thought this meant keep warm, but it might, you've meant to actually say it, they keep warm, so maybe it doesn't keep it warm, but it's always roasting for me anyway, since I opened this. If you just leave it, eventually that'll drop after about 20 minutes, and uh, the pressure will be going naturally. So that would take about 20 minutes, or you can speed it up by opening the vent, but watch, because it's really powerful at first, you know. Probably I would just wait 20 minutes, but for this I'll do the vent, and I'll do it like this. And i just pop it up a bit, just to let it out slowly, because I could go like this. This is the way you made it. So I just keep it down. This, this wobbles, by the way, I've seen people asking. Yeah, this wobbles a bit. So this is what I do. I stopped the video but I think it will take about a minute and a half because it's so recently stopped still very high pressure that's pretty good like that let's get to the action an action pack video That's really hot up there. That's hard now. Go on. So everything's piping hot at the moment. I, usually I wouldn't do this at this time. I'd wait a while. But just to show you, you can do it if you want. Usually I take the lid off first. Yeah, it looks done nice and tender. I think that's the main thing. Well, apart from speed as well and comfort and no s sound, silent, no smells, the tenderness as well. Everything about it's perfect. Everyone should be pressure cooking. I wear a jacket now, it's alright. Leave me alone. Absolutely superbly fantastic. Look at that. Melts in the mouth. Where's the carrot? Oh, lovely. You could tell this. Alright, here goes. Absolutely superb. I know you like hearing people chewing. This still says OH, so I don't know if that means it's still keeping its heat or something, keep warm. But uh, usually I switch it off, but one day I might just leave it to see what happens. But not today. So £39, usually £50 I think, but whatever price, they're really good. I mean, Instant Pot are the, the leaders of this. I think they tend to call themselves 3-in-1, but they're really just pressure cookers. 
that you can leave the lid off basically to cook do other things but yeah I think they're really worth it for kitchens because as I say the texture the peace and quiet everything's brilliant about it better than a slow cooker and everything alright in fact because it is a slow cooker anyway so as well so it's all good my pot isn't warped or anything still the same old pot this thin plastic is fine no damage it looks to me like hardly any water has been used but uh, I don't know ok that's one then goodbye Oh yeah, for speed as well. It's the best for speed. It's the best for everything. Wet.